Hey everybody, Dirty Dan here. So today we've got a uh, different video. We're gonna be working on a piece of rolling stock this time. Normally we're working on engines and we're gonna change up the style a little bit. For today's video, we're gonna do a bit more of a not time-lapse restoration. We're gonna do this real time. So uh, yeah, you guys get to see me work. So we're, here we have uh, one of the cabooses I picked up at the show recently. This is a Pennsylvania caboose, but not just any Pennsylvania caboose, a lighted Pennsylvania caboose. Um, these are pretty special because Tyco only made lighted cabooses for a very short time um, in their earlier years. So these are kind of harder to find. I have one. It's a Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe one. I will put a picture of it up on screen. Um, I have yet to get that one um, correctly put together. Um, something isn't quite right with it, so... All right, so we've got it open now, and you can see this is one of the main telltale signs of a lighted caboose. They have this plastic insert on the inside. And then you can see we, we're going to have to... Um, the one problem with this caboose, or there's a couple, um, it has a broken smokestack, um, which I'll have to find a replacement for. And it has one of the chunks has been broken off the corner of the frame, which you really don't really... That's, that doesn't really bother me, but... Yeah, it's just there, so I'll have to deal with that. So, until I can find a new frame, we'll have to let that slide. So anyway, let's keep taking this thing apart. Got a couple of screws here. Um, it's kind of interesting. This one is a little different than the other one I have. Uh, I believe it's actually got a, a little, bit, little bit of a later design on the light. So, Tyco may have made those for a while, but as far as I know, they didn't make these for very long. Um, or, or they just may not have produced them a lot. They just did not make many of them. So, they're a bit scarce, but you can find them. Okay. Um, we're gonna have to figure out. Yeah, this thing's pretty rusty. And the light actually would not turn on whatsoever when I first obtained it. So, that's no surprise. But yeah, it's missing a few parts. I actually had a replacement ladder here, but I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go ahead and say, since this corner is broken off, we probably don't wanna use this. So we'll be putting this just back up here in my parts. Um, but yeah, it'll at least be benefit from a good cleaning. Um, and I'm gonna swap these trucks around. Oh, nice, they just pop right out. I didn't see that. Oh, well, at least the front one wants to pop out. Oh, there we go. Okay, so, yeah, these trucks are definitely going to need a good clean. Let's hit this uh, weight with a wire brush. Okay, that is much better than it was. Uh, it's probably not perfect, but it'll do. So at least that's cleaner. And now these trucks, the trucks are in, mm, these don't look too good. Um, I think a quick uh, hit with the wire brush would probably fix these up though. Although I think I might actually have to take the wheel out. As you can see, the pickup wheel on this one is in quite poor condition. We got my soldering iron out so we can desolder these wires. Because I'm actually going to switch both of the trucks because one of them has a coupler and one of them does not. And I'm going to switch the wires so I can switch the couplers, move actually the entire truck. So the uh, front will have a coupler and the back will not. So that will allow me to actually use this thing. So anyway, there we go. We'll probably just clean those up with like some alcohol or something. This is the better truck. So I figure we can just hit this one lightly with this. It should be okay. See, the one thing with these trucks is you have to be careful not to take the um, 
coating that's been applied to them off. But it's kind of hard to do. You can kind of get around it, but honestly, you'd probably be better off just blacking the metal again. I think there's actually a process you can do to re-blacken the metal. I could be wrong. Okay, well, this truck looks a lot better. It seems like the coupler's a bit seized though. That's strange. It doesn't seem to have any spring tension on it whatsoever. I'm actually gonna take this one apart. Oh, okay, it just appears um, it's a little stuck in here. Give this a little bit of a wiggle to kind of get it freed up. Actually, we'll end up just prying this guy off. There we go. Okay, and we'll hit the insides of this with a wire brush. I'm gonna hold this with a pair of pliers so I don't mess up my hand. better. Hit this side too. Okay, so that's much cleaner. We'll just clean that on the uh, tub of water. Now this truck, I think we're actually going to have to take the wheels out, but first we'll actually clean up the top area. It's quite rusted, this truck. All right, that's good enough for now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pair of pliers here and just pry this apart. And that should let us get the, oh, that's the wrong way. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, we got one axle out. And just have to pry this guy this way. It should pop out. And there we go. Okay. So then we want to hit the insides of this with a wire brush. Make sure we get all this corrosion off. I honestly think we might end up painting this back truck because this one was so corroded that it's in pretty poor condition. And the blackening finish on the metal is, eh, it's quite gone. So yeah, we're probably gonna have to go ahead and hit this with a um, coat of black paint. And this has no coupler. This one's no good, so we'll just pry it off, break it out. And I don't have any replacements because they don't make horn hook replacement couplers, so. I think Walters might. I don't remember correctly, but Walters, I think, actually does still produce horn hooks. Or, or at least they still have them for sale on their website. I will have to check later and maybe I'll order some. Okay. So now that we've got that off, yeah, see this, this truck cover is very corroded. I might actually have to hit this with a wire wheel because this one is really bad. I'm actually getting a knife here and just kind of use that to clean out this bit here.
that's getting better, but it's still not there. This is probably gonna take a while. So we'll hit the wheels real quick and then I'll probably do the rest off camera. This is the most corroded wheel. Wow, this thing, yeah, this thing's pretty bad. Yeah, this wheel's in pretty bad shape too. Um, I'm probably just gonna have to hit these with a, the wire brush. This is gonna take a very long time. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit these with the wire brush and then I'll come back. Alrighty, so it's only a moment later and uh, I actually ended up hitting the truck side frames with a wire wheel and I was able to get most of the corrosion away, but there's still a tiny bit left, but it's basically as good as I can get it. So for now, we're gonna have to deal with it. I think I should still be able to get it to um, work relatively well, but for now, we're gonna get to cleaning these shell components. And this is my typical method for cleaning shells and such, and pretty much all the parts. Um, it's only when there's very dirty parts, I'll usually get a secondary tub and use some degreaser there to uh, help loosen all the pent up grime and grease that's built up over the years. Okay, there we go. We'll let that guy sit there. We can only just give this a brief clean, the actual um, plastic piece here. Just kind of let it sit in there. Here's our frame piece. Okay, frame is clean. Let me grab the trucks and the wheels now. Okay, now we just gotta clean these guys. Now, I know a lot of you are probably saying, Dan, what are you doing? You're gonna clean those and those are gonna corrode and rust again because you're putting them in water. I have a solution for that. And I use this pretty often, but, um, <clears throat> After I clean any metal part in um, water, um, I'll usually, even though this water is very warm, um, hit it with a hair dryer for a while to make sure all of the nooks and crannies are, have no water in them. Uh, because if you do leave any water, it'll cause a lot of problems that you don't want in the future. I've had it happen before. So that I've found is to be a fantastic solution to that. And that allows me to clean parts a lot easier parts that are not always necessary to disassemble, but you want to give it a good thorough cleaning. So, <clears throat> and I think we're actually going to end up repainting this rear truck just to um, fix the discoloration it now has because of the corrosion. That's looking much better. Okay, and then we got this wheel. Now this is the heavily corroded wheel. I've gotten it to a good point, but it could still be better. But for now, I'm gonna have to leave it. I basically can't get it any better than it already is without damaging it. So. The corrosion's taken its toll on that wheel, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'll be, I'll be fully able to get it back. And there we go. 
So that is all of our parts clean. I will hit these with the hairdryer and we'll get back to reassembly. Okay, I almost forgot, but we still have to paint the uh, parts here. So get a bit of the black paint here. I'm actually gonna paint the, the uh, ladder too because it's in pretty bad shape paint wise. Okay, ladder is all done. Now we just got to paint up this truck. I'm going to make sure not to get paint on the areas that I don't want it. Okay, so looks like we're good. Now I just got to wait for these pieces to dry and we'll be ready to reassemble this thing. All right, it's time for the final assembly of giving the parts some time to dry. And uh, well, let's get this thing together. So put this insert in first. Got to get all our screws over here. Uh, we'll reassemble our truck. And then we want to install the coupler on um, uh, I think we'll install it on this guy you're gonna make this make sure this guy is actually moving freely no okay one second put a bit of oil on there that should help it loosen up So we'll run a knife here through the center. Maybe help get some of the crap that may have built up in here. Put a drop of oil on there. Okay. Now it should go on and work relatively well. Might need some time to work back and forth, but it's kind of going. Sorta, all right, well, that's good enough for me for right now. So let's get this guy on the truck here. Let's use some pliers and squeeze it down. Okay, and there we go. So that's reinstalled. And then for this truck, we're gonna put some oil in all of these journals. So these wheels will turn freely. And then we want these on this side. And we're gonna actually use our handy dandy piece here to get these guys in there. Actually, we're going to have to end up using these pliers. Come on now. Oh, I think we got it. Yeah, there we go. All right, now we just got to install this next one. And we're good to go. Let's pry back on here. Or not. This might take a couple tries. Nope. 
Okay, there we go. And that's perfect. So now we just have to put the trucks back on. We'll get the soldering iron warming up. Start putting this guy back together. So we'll throw, this is the one we want on the front. We wanna make sure the coupler's facing towards the front of the caboose. And this is our, this is going to be our rear truck. So then we'll install, so if this goes like this, I don't think it actually matters which way this weight is installed. Okay, and we're going to pause right there. Uh, so basically what happened was I ended up reversing all of the parts in the caboose, and I ended up having to go back and reverse everything I had done previously. So I'll just spare you guys the uh, time wasted there. Okay, so I fixed that little slip up. Yeah, I had basically everything on the uh, caboose reversed, so I fixed that, and now we can actually assemble this damn thing. We get to put this ladder in here. There we go. Install this screw here. Oh, maybe not. Have to get it in the hole first. Okay, there we go. Finished caboose. Let's see if it works. Okay, here we go. Let me give it some power. And there it is. Nice and lighted. And it's got a bit of a flicker, but there's really not much I can do about that. I feel like it should probably go away a little bit after it gets run for a little while. So I'm going to set this up on the track, get it running. Thank you. 